Assalamualaikum, Namaste, Namaskar, Welcome back to my YouTube channel everyone. This is Sharon Zekria and first of all, I want to wish all my beautiful viewers a happy Eid Al-Fitr. I want to wish everyone Eid Mubarak on this beautiful day, on this beautiful occasion and I hope you all are staying at home indoors celebrating this beautiful festival along with your family and not stepping out because safety is first do stay at home guys today we're going to be making some kick ass mutton biryani and mutton biryani is everything when you talk about a muslim festival what is eid what could eid possibly possibly be without mutton biryani so let's quickly get into the ingredient section and i'm going to show you all how to make some kick ass mutton biryani in the typical tamil nadu way more or less the ambur biryani types so here it goes all right so here we have our ingredients we've taken about one kilo of freshly chopped mutton um, not too much of fat not too much of meat like you know an equal balance of bone and meat which would make the biryani taste very nice which is uh, we've got this washed very well thoroughly in water and um, along with some turmeric and some salt and we've got some turmeric powder here and we're going to be using about half a kilo of onions all spices you have uh, cloves cardamom you got some star anise here to add on to the flavor and then you have a cup of curd we've taken a cup of uh, pudina leaves some uh, coriander leaves we've got about three slices of uh, lemon here lime here which is going to turn into juice and we're going to be using in the biryani later on we've taken about uh, say 15 to 20 uh, green chilies and we've split it into half we've taken about half a kilo of tomato um, which is going to be go which is going to go into the biryani as well we've got some ginger garlic paste and some salt to taste and in terms of the masala we have some uh, coriander powder by eastern here and some chili powder and we've taken about one kilo of rice which we've got uh, soaking in the water for the last 20-25 minutes this is uh, regular bullet rice the biryani rice that we use uh, you can either use and alternate between this and um, some sona masuri rice or some jeera samba rice this particular rice is what makes the biryani taste really nice and really good you know, generally basmati rice does not taste really good with this masala for the biryani we got some uh, kasuri methi here which we are going to be using later on we got some pure ghee and some turmeric powder first we are going to be pouring in some refined sunflower oil so once the oil is heated, we're going to be adding our uh, allspice mix into the oil and wait for that to uh, heat up a little so the oil gets the flavor of all the cloves and cardamom and the star anise. Mm. Next up, we're going to be adding in some uh, chopped onions that we've uh, chopped and kept aside and we're going to wait until this turns uh, golden brown. We're giving this a mix now and after this the tomatoes are going to go in. We are quickly adding some salt to taste uh, into the onions. Um, so next up, once the onions are cooked, we are going to be adding in some uh, turmeric powder, about uh, half a teaspoon. Next up, we are going to be adding in some uh, ginger garlic paste. This is about 3 to 4 tablespoons. So next up, we are going to be adding in the mutton once the ginger and garlic has, uh, you know, begin to cook. We are going to be adding 1 kilo of mutton for 1 kilo of rice and that's the ratio that you want to maintain. If you are using half a kilo of rice, you need to add about half a kilo of mutton. Only then the biryani's consistency would turn out to be good. So once you have added the mutton into the ginger garlic paste, make sure you are allowed to cook for about 10 to 15 minutes so that it soaks into the juices of the ginger garlic paste and the onions and the spice mix that we already added. Uh, make sure you all stir it up occasionally so that it does not get caught up at the bottom of the cooker. And uh, next up we are going to be adding in some tomatoes. The half a kilo of tomatoes that we have uh, got chopped and kept ready. So we are going to be putting this into the meat now. After the 10 to 15 minute mark is done. I make sure I'll give it a good mix. So once we mix the tomatoes and allow it to cook for a while and we're going to be adding the 15 to 20 green chili that we've got slit and kept aside. And doesn't it look beautiful already and trust me the smell is already you know, going into a different level and zoning me out. 
because bir- the smell of biryani is something that no one on earth can resist my anyone who loves indian food anyone who loves muslim food cannot resist the smell of biryani at yes. any cost we give it a nice mix after we add the green chili into the the gravy here so we need we want the chili to go down deep and give it all the spice that you know that we need to eat the biryani and the spice is what is going to make the biryani taste amazing and out of this world so once we give the green chili a good mix we're taking in some uh, coriander leaves and sprinkling it all over the gravy that we got ready here along with the coriander leaves we're going to be taking some uh, pudina that's the mint leaves and we're going to be adding it with the coriander leaves and we're going to give it that nice minty taste to it you know the freshness of the of the leaves and the herbs is, is absolutely stunning because you know once you already give it a mix it it smells beyond something that you can imagine man it's it's what brings in all the masalas it's what brings in all the flavors of the biryani and you know it it, it is what combines the whole experience of having the biryani because the mint and the coriander is what does magic to this dish we've taken like a handful of kasuri methi and we're going to add this in for the flavor kasuri methi is one such herb that is more or less a dry spice that adds in a lot of aroma and flavor to any any dish that you prepare using the spice it just gives it that beautiful smell the moment you add on to you uh, know add add into the um, the gravy here it gives it literally lets out all the aroma of the gravy in in an entirely different dimension from what it is already in So next up we're going to be adding about 2 tablespoons of uh, red chili powder for the spice along with the green chili that we already added. <laughs> the best thing about Indian spices man you know it's so colorful and so gradient in the way it looks it absolutely adds on to a lot of contrast in what we're cooking and makes the food amazing. I'm personally a big fan of all the spices that we add in and here we have some Kashmiri chili for the color of the gravy. uh this does not add too much of spice if you can see there's a lot of difference for between the kashmiri chili on the left and the the red chili that we already added in for the spice to the right so we're done adding the chilies uh we're going to be adding in some coriander powder about 2 uh, tablespoons of it you make sure you'll give this a good mix guys and uh we've already got the meat cooking in for about 25 minutes now um only then we've added in all the spices the spice mix that's the chili powder and the coriander powder uh we're giving it a good mix now we've squeezed up the one and a half lime the three pieces of lime that we had cut and we're going to add in the juice of it into the the gravy make sure you don't add the lime seeds inside because that causes a lot of sourness and bitterness to the the final taste so as you can see my mom's taken all the seeds out separately and she just added the juice inside the gravy which is going to give it the right amount of uh, citric flavor the acidity and the the sourness that the biryani requires the tanginess the biryani requires we got a cup of curd which we're going to be adding in next to balance out all the flavors like uh, the salt and the spices and everything that we've added and the colors are so much in contrast this is something that i love watching every time my mother makes and cooks biryani because when you're adding in the spices the curd and everything the masalas throw out so much of aroma and so much of flavors that you cannot begin to imagine this is this is more like a volcano of flavors man this, this literally could erupt any moment that's how it looks look at it look at the you know the the color difference and look at the contrast of all the colors and the spices and the vegetables in there along with the meat this is absolute heaven because there is nothing on earth which can be compared to biryani biryani is just otherworldly you know extraterrestrial you can say as you can see the biryani masala has come into a boil after we added all the spices and all the uh, the curd and uh, the leaves and the dry spices and you know all the masalas the biryani masala is almost ready just a few minutes away from adding it into the rice uh, so at this point i'm going to turn the flame to high and allow the biryani to cook with the cooker being closed So we need to make sure that we get about uh, two vessels. In the meanwhile, I've got a vessel here which has got about roughly two liters of water, which we're going to be using to cook the rice for the biryani. Once the water has come to a boil, we're going to be adding in some salt to taste uh, for the rice because we don't want the rice to be bland and just the masala to have flavor because uh, it's not going to make the biryani and the rice taste good. So once you've added the salt into the water, we're going to add in some pudina or the mint leaves. just for the flavor of the mint leaves in the water 
And we're not going to be using any food color at all. Like I usually say in all my videos, we don't use food color at home. So we're not going to be using any food color at all uh, for this biryani. Whatever you see is going to be entirely the actual flavors of the masala and actual color contrast of the masalas in the, that you add into the biryani masala. So as you can see, my mom's adding the rice in. So one kilo of rice in about two, 2.2 liters of water. So that's the right, uh, right amount of water to be added for the rice because you cannot measure this based on the number of cups of rice that you're going to be adding. So we had to soak the rice for about uh, say half an hour to 45 minutes before we could use it. Only then the rice would come out well. If not, the rice would break and it would not uh, taste too good and it would not turn out to be really good and in the actual fun, you know. Oh, uh, what do you say? You don't eat food without food. As you can see the rice uh, boiling up to the top of the water. Uh, we're going to allow it to cook a little and wait for the rice to get done of, to about 70 to 80 percent. So that's the, that's the amount of, uh, you know, the steam or the boil that we want of the rice. We only cook the masala to about 80 percent because we're going to ultimately leave the rice and the masala uh, for a dum for a good 15 to 20 minutes on high flame. Only then the biryani masala and the biryani rice is going to uh, seal in its flavors together and turn out to be one single dish. So we've taken the rice off the stove and you've strained it. As you can see. So here it goes guys. We have opened the cooker and look at the masala being cooked. Look at all the oil that has oozed out. Look at all the oil that has come out of you know the meat and wow, the smell the aroma of it is absolute heaven so we've transferred the meat and the masala the biryani masala into the big vessel that we cook the rice and uh, after the rice has been strained off the water uh, we're adding the rice back in and we're not going to be adding in layers like how we've uh, added in the talishiri mutton biryani so this is going to be like one entire layer of the masala and the meat and topped up with all the rice that we've cooked and this is going to go into the dam and it's going to let, you know, stay on fire for about 15-20 minutes the uncooked part of the meat is going to be cooked and the uncooked part of the rice is going to be cooked and it's going to be blend into one and we're going to be mixing it together Alright, so our biryani is done and it has been on dam for the last 15-20 minutes now. We're going to add in some ghee, some pure ghee by Nandini. We're going to add in about a good generous 3-4 to four teaspoons of it. So that it mixes up well with the, with the rice and the meat and it gives a very good flavor. And uh, just a pro tip, uh, I've got a small bash plate kind of a vessel kept below the main aluminium vessel of the biryani and uh, it does not allow the biryani rice to get uh, caught up to the bottom of the vessel and it does not allow the biryani rice to uh, get overcooked and get burnt. So once we've added the ghee, we're going to add in some uh, coriander leaves and the pudina leaves, the mint leaves rather, to garnish the biryani on top. And here we have it, the beautiful mutton biryani guys, it is ready to be served, it smells amazing. I'm quickly going to put this into a plate and see how it looks and how it tastes. And finally the biryani is ready and it looks absolutely amazing. Look at the chunks of mutton on top man. Shit. It smells so good. I really hope you all try this beautiful biryani at home. And I hope you all uh, like this recipe and you know. And this is something that we've been making at home for a very, la very long time. It's been passed down generations this particular recipe and it has not changed one bit. It is just the same way that I've had my grandmother's biryani. My mom has been making the same way, my sister-in-law makes it the same way now 
and trust me this is something more like a family recipe that we have and it is absolutely wonderful guys do try this at home do let me know how it turned out to be thank you so much for watching this video i hope you all like this video and uh, do stay tuned for my next vlogs do hit the like button and comment down below if you like this recipe and do subscribe to my channel guys it means a lot when you all do it and uh, i'll see you all in another video happy ramzan once again eid mubarak to all you beautiful people thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you all soon stay armored stay safe stay at home